respected Shri Anand Bora. Thank you, sir, for coming here today. You have always been very kind. Thank you, Mr. Prakash Singh, sir, for coming again. In fact, uh, really beholden, sir, because you agreed to come at a very short notice because Mr. Dikil Kumar had some commitment way back home and uh, Mr. Prakash Singh had some family commitment also, but well, for me, he decided to come. Thank you, sir, so much. Mr. Praveen, uh, Mr. Arthur Khandelwal is here. Thank you, sir. I'm so grateful and honored you came. Mr. Karthikan is here. And my elder brother, V.P. Kapoor. He was my inspiration to join the IPS. We, you know, we are from the same colony. He is my elder, he is my neighbor, sir, also. And uh, first time, in fact, I went to Jhansi to attend his wedding. His younger brother was a dear friend, and we were, of course, neighbors also. And there I saw his status, perks, orderlies, bungalows, jeeps, and all. I said, God knows what this kind of job he has got. And till then, I had not known anything about the civil services examination at all. But the first seed was sown then. But then he was very brilliant in studies, unlike me. And so I, I gave away. I said, gave up. I said, no point. Why talk of uh, joining this? But anyway, that persisted, and later on, so much has been taught. You you can see in the book also. And later, at one particular job, there was a woman, uh, an officer of the Indian Audit and Account Service, Mrs. I Indira. I wonder whether any one of you has heard. I was in a particular office working, and I resigned. Uh, you know, rash young people. That is what they do because I wasn't given leave to attend the wedding of a friend. And uh, I resigned and my mother blasted me. She said, go back, otherwise I'll tell your father. And my father was very generous in using his stick. You know, those were the days when, uh, when the stick was used very often, not these days at all. And then uh, she said, go back, get your resignation back. I was really worried. But next day, she was the bigger boss. She called me tore up my resignation, gave me leave, and she asked me, why don't you try for civil services? Well, I don't know what, why she said that, but anyway, it was there. And then many people helped along, so I have come, without the long story, to, to cut it short. I am uh, so grateful to all of you. And one thing I want to say here, that in this country, I think this India, the inclusive country, democratic country, Everybody has a chance. I think we are very lucky. You don't really necessarily need um, money or resources to really come up. Many of us are here and mine is not a unique story. There are uh, millions of such stories. People have come up and I think we must be, at least I am very grateful to my motherland. And I think it's a message to everyone else also, all the youth. You don't have to worry. This country is a land of opportunities. The only thing you need is a bit of uh, effort and, of course, a lot of good luck. Thank you so much, everyone. It's a big blessing to you all. Too. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bora, for this uh, very crisp and wonderful introduction. Now is the time when uh, our panelists to enlighten us. <coughs> Uh, I will request uh, Prakash Singh ji to kindly come. Yes, autobiographies I generally don't read. So a few days back when he rang me up and he said, uh, you have to come, I said, yes, I'm, I'm definitely coming. But when he said, no, no, you have to be on the dais, I said, no, no, dais was not me, I will sit down and But he had a problem and uh, I had to come to his rescue and so I had to agree to uh, speak and when I have to speak then I had to read the book also <laughs> as I said uh, I don't normally read autobiographies but uh, as I started turning over the pages I started with a, some with some disinterest but as I started turning over the pages I said no here is something interesting it's a real life story of a man you can say probably probably from rags to riches I mean here is a man who starts as an LDC he comes as a refugee, as nobody. Uh, they, they take shelter in Delhi, and then he starts his career as an LDC, goes to the, uh, becomes a, a 
an UDC in due course, and then a, an assistant in the railways. And after that, he takes a shot at the IPS and qualifies in that. I thought it was a tremendous journey. I had known uh, uh, Biel Vora earlier, but I had not known his journey in life. And that is what uh, aroused my interest in the story, that here is a man who can start from the scratch and go right up to the top. <coughs> Essentially and predominantly police achievement. Police achievement and uh, the success lay in uh, the, the excellent strategic planning. They, what they did was that they established police camps. I, I had occasion to study Tripura, I mean how uh, insurgency was dealt with. I mean they established police camps in the heart of the uh, areas affected by a terrorist movement. The, so when, and these uh, camps, they took the terrorists in the area head on and that, that coupled with several other measures led to containment of the insurgency in Tripura. I think his signal, his contribution in uh, Tripura was was remarkable and I think uh, he would always look back on his contribution in that area with a sense of pride and sense of satisfaction. Uh, an unlikely police chief, yes, yes, it, it happens with most of us. Uh, you don't plan to be a police officer and uh, in your youth uh, they say, oh, oh you, <coughs> he, he can never join the police, this, that, but ultimately do, they do well. I mean, it, it happened with me also. Nobody ever thought that I would join the police because I was a very shy and reserved person and uh, devoted only to, entirely to my studies or games, nothing else. Uh, I was shy even of talking to young girls, let me admit that. <laughs> so, uh, that was life. So, he said, where will the police go? But then, I mean, somehow, it, destiny pushed me in that direction. And the, the gods prevented me from mm -hmm. taking the other papers which would have made me eligible for uh, central services or in the welfare. Another, at another place he says, bureaucracy defies PM's orders. Uh, this is, he says in the context of when Vishnath Pratap Singh gave some order about the CRPF gold, uh, gold and Jubilee medal being issued, but nothing of the kind happened. Well, I have, I have also this frustrating experience. I remember <coughs> at an IPS association meeting where the chief minister was present, and this was in late 70s. I mean, we got an assurance from him that we will have commissioner of police posted in Kanpur. Yes, we were very happy, thrilled. Commissioner of police, Mr. Vasudev Panjani was uh, designated as the commissioner of police and Mr. K. K. Bakshi as the home secretary and Ram Singh as state minister for home. He, uh, along with the uh, commissioner designate, they, they went to different places in India where commissioner system was involved just to understand how the system works. By the time they come back, the proposal is shut down. And it took another 40 years for Yogi Adityanath to uh, initiate the commissionerate system in Kanpur and Lucknow. So how, I mean, a chief minister gives an assurance, it is published in newspapers and it doesn't happen. So bureaucracy has, a, has an enormous capacity to scuttle what even the political bosses concede. Uh, he has also commented at one place about uh, ignorance of ignorance of government of India about Northeast. I mean, this is pathetic. I have seen. I have myself served in, in the Northeast for almost five years, and I now and I know how ignorant people in this part of the country are about the Northeast. And at one stage, Vora got a signal saying that uh, this and uh, finally retiring as director general. And what is what I found interesting that here is a man who starts from Jaisalmer House and ends concludes his career also there. I, mean, I think destiny had was playing its part and uh, uh, shaping him along a particular course that you have to move along this course, uh, which, it, which is what he did. As I started reading the book, as I said, what I liked uh, about the book was its simplicity. So normally, as I said, why I don't write, at, at, uh, I don't read and like uh, reading autobiographies because a lot of people do it for self-glorification. Uh, I mean, they magnify their achievements. Yes, achievements are there, but uh, a lot of people magnify their achievements. And then I have noticed that some people use these autobiographies to settle scores also. They will write something disparaging about X, Y, Z with whom they could not get on well. But I found not, nothing of that kind here. Here is a very simple story, uh, uh, down to earth, very realistic. And at several, uh, on several pages, I thought I could connect <coughs> myself with those stories because something similar happened in my career also. 
and then he has referred to several uh, police officers and the kind of training he went through and uh, I mean that uh, took me back so to say in the time machine and I felt as if I'm also back in the Central Police Tra Training College and in, the, and in the riding school, riding horses and what not. So that's what uh, sustained my interest throughout and I, I can say that I have read the entire book from cover to cover. Only at one o'clock, I, today I finished reading it in a hurry because I got it at short notice, so I had to, uh, I mean, I finished it today. Thank you, sir. Speak about B.L.'s book, which I had the occasion to read as a manuscript. <clears throat> when he asked me to write a few lines about it. My former colleague, Mr. Prakash Singh, has worn the uniform with distinction for three and a half decades. Praveen Swami has written about security for two and a half decades. And my young friend, Siddharth Lutra, has defended crime for two and a half decades. <laughs> Now, I, I don't want to vitiate this very peaceful and happy environment of this meeting, this, our get-together here. But I do feel that there are very serious issues relating to policing and the future of our country. Police is perhaps one of the most vital components of the entire governance system under the Constitution. It enforces law and order. And if it doesn't, I do not know how to describe what were the consequences. We just spoken about partition and difficulties and so on. <coughs> we were uh, 27, 28 crores when 47, we got independence. Our entire civil police forces were less than a lakh. We had hardly any district reserve police, armed police forces. The British administration was running the country essentially through the military, through the army, and then through its own officers who were holding all the responsible positions in the police service. Now, this is a long time ago, 75 years ago. From 27, 26 crore, we have become 140 crores. From less than a lakh in uniform, we have 11, 12, 13 lakhs in the central armed police forces, eight, nine armed police forces. We had just the Crown Reserve Police and the Sam Rifles, the ethnic force in the Northeast. And today we have several lakhs of constabulary in the various states and union territories. But it's not enough. Neither in numbers, nor in capability and competence because of logistical reasons and lack of funding. Meanwhile, because of the enormous increase, five times, six times increase in population, the scale of criminality is also increased, is bound to have happened. Social religious tensions have come to the fore, leading to communal conflicts, leading to violence, Again, a problem for the police. And this kind of situation, as uh, Parveen mentioned in passing, <clears throat> when you have internal disorder, the situation on the ground is not under control, then your adversary, your neighbors, they look for this wonderful opportunity to do their own, what they have to do. So the police really faces multiple challenges from our own people, from our citizens, for missions and commissions, for certain happenings, developments which take place because of our political activities, our democracy, free as it is, and then the external factors come in. So the police has much bigger challenge than the army has 
in the sense that the army has constitutionally the duty, responsibility to defend the country against war and, war and foreign aggression. So therefore, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would not uh, labor at this point excessively, but still reiterate that the police has to be taken more seriously and the police has to get much more support. Prakash has been uh, campaigning for reform for the entire period since he retired, which was about the time I did. But nothing tangible has come out because of the way we are composed. Actually, our state political setup, nobody has any serious interest in what the Supreme Court had directed on more than one occasion. And this question that uh, Parveen referred in passing gain of corruption. This corruption, unaccountability, indiscipline, lack of professionalism, they all emanate from interference, from political politicization of the constabularies. Once you uh, have a director general or inspector general, or for that matter, the superintendent of police of a district, and you leave him to enforce the law as his bounded as his bounded duty is to do. And then, if he goes wrong, sack him, jail him, whatever. But let him work, let him perform. Reference was also made to this commissionerate and so on. Nothing can work. We create all kind of police commissionerates everywhere, but. Unless you allow them to work freely and fairly, the system won't deliver. And if you allow this order to continue randomly or as endemically, then, then uh, we have a high cost to pay. So I would end up by uh, once again complimenting BL for not only retailing to us his autobiography, his life and service, but perhaps unintended by him, by telling us the course of his experiences while wearing the uniform, he has taken us to various parts of the country and to exposure to the various services in which he served, the BSF, the CRP, the CISF and what not. In fact, to my knowledge, perhaps, is one of the few former policemen who were served in every central armed police force, besides serving his home state and home cadre. So I will conclude here by uh, hoping that the uh, book which is written uh, will uh, become, will trigger um, some serious thought about where we have succeeded, where we have failed and why we can no longer afford to fail with the future of our country. So once again, BL, my congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vora. I'm sure everybody agrees that it was worth waiting for these words of wisdom from you, sir. Thank you very much.